you're an awesome guy. The devil tried to beat up on me since Tuesday. Oh, God. But he ain't got nothing. He's trying to take my voice away. I want to share a quick little scripture coming out of Mark 14. Three through nine. See, this is worship too. The word is worship. Preaching is worship. Teaching is worship. Communion is worship. Prayer is worship. Everything we do unto the Lord is worship. Quick little scripture I want to share out of Mark 14, 3 to 9. If sound boot have it. Oh, I'm going to read it. Hallelujah. It says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leopard, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spignor, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had indignation with them themselves and said, why was the waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her and said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She had wrought a good work unto me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye have, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. She had done it. She had done what she could. She had came aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. Burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she had done shall be spoken of a memorial of her. I want to talk about what real worship means. From the Bible says that wheresoever this gospel is preached, this woman shall be preached. And this is worship. What's she done? I start thinking, okay. I want to tell y'all, I want y'all to look at it as a story. I want y'all to visualize it with me. I'm going to say it in a story way. Okay. You see that the disciples, they were sitting at the house of Bethany. All sat down at the table. I started thinking about it. They was just all sitting out at the table, just chilling. And Jesus is in the place. You, they chilling at the table with meat, at meat, and Jesus is in the building. I'm like, wait. And God placed on my heart, wait, you know that you can get used to God? You know that you can get used to being around God? You get used to the singing, you get used to the preaching, you get used to the, the ushering, you get used to everything that's going on in church, you get used to the, to the choir. You know how you can tell when you get used to something? When you start deciding on when you go go to church. Should I go Tuesday or should I go Sunday? You schedule him like a little league baseball game or something, like oh, I'm going to just decide when. Just like a man and a woman, when they get married, they've been married together for so long, they forgot about their, their first love. You can get used to God, just used to being around him. I don't want that for Philadelphia. I don't want us to be used to God. To be when God is in the place, God is in church, and we just used to just being there. We're used to the miracles. We're used to the healings. We're used to hearing the testimonies. and we used to... We used to the chill bumps, we used to the singing until we not even impress with our savior. I don't want that to be Philly. But look, not, not just us, not just us being used to God, but the disciples was used to God too. At first they were serving him, ministering to his every need. At first they was impressed with him. They say some of them even quit their jobs to walk with Jesus. Some of them left their families to walk with Jesus. Never mind where I'm going to eat. Never mind what I'm going to eat. Just keep on talking to me, Jesus. Jesus said, will you leave me? Oh, no, I'm not going to leave you. Where can I go? In your hands are the words of eternal life. Where can I go? They were serving him. 
They had a zeal for him. They were serving him with passion. Physician quit their job to walk with Jesus. Tax collector became soul collectors to walk with Jesus. Fishermen became fisher of men to walk with Jesus. But to hear him was their problem. They was used to the miracles, used to seeing all the testimonies and everything that we was doing. They walk with Jesus on regular days. They walk through Jesus on original days. Serving him, doing the work of the Lord. But forgot about the Lord of the work. Ministering to him. Washing clothes. Doing everything, serving him. Going from city to city. Doing all of that. Serving him. You know how when you first get saved, you're just doing everything for God. You're inviting everybody. They was just going out. They was just doing it. But I feel like we're getting used to God. We're getting used to routine. We're getting used to everything. We get used to good services. We're getting used to. We come to church getting used to. Oh, I, you know exactly what time church go start. You know exactly what time pastor go finish. You know exactly what time the game start. You just got your mindset. You just getting used to it. Everything. And God was right with them. But let me tell you something. The real test of faith is not how you walk with Jesus when he's moving. It's how you walk with God when he's not doing nothing at all. What you going to do now? When it feels like he's not blessing you, feel like when things are good, everybody prays him. When things good, but whenever things, he, it seems like, let me see what he go do. You just, oh, so busy being busy. They got used to Jesus. Just think about it. Them sitting at the table with me. They got used to Jesus. So they sat down and meet with Jesus. They sat down at the table. Him, the disciples, all of them. Simon. Isn't it like that in your house? When you come to your house, you, your wife, your family, and everybody, y'all come in the house. Jesus is in there. Y'all sit down at the table, don't pray, don't do nothing. Like if it's, like his presence just don't matter. Sit down, ain't nothing special. No China place, no nothing, just Burger King. That's it, just sitting down at the table. Nothing, no big deal. Isn't it like that when we come to church? Jesus is in here, the anointing is in here, but you're standing here just, like it's just not a big deal. Jesus is in here, but. I don't want that for Philly. As you worship leader. Under path. But they were used to Jesus. Just picture it. Visualize it with me. Just imagine you got James, John, Peter. <sighs> Just sitting down. Sitting down. Have a seat, Jesus. Just sit down. Have a seat. <sighs> What a day, what a day. What a day. Ah. I would wash your feet, but you you know my heart. You Jesus, you know my heart. I I would. You know. I would stop by the hospital, but uh, his past visitation, I was out. I, I would I would tie. If they really had a need, I, if they really needed something, I would, if they really needed a project building too, if I would tie, but mm, I only got $40 for the week. They got used to Jesus. Isn't it an insult when your presence feel like it just don't matter no more? I don't want that for Philly. So they sat and meet with Jesus. All the 12, the minister heads, the deacons, the ushers, they sat down. All the big boys sat down with Jesus. Look, they all sat down with Jesus as if nothing, nobody special was at the table until all of a sudden a woman walk in. She didn't have no title. She didn't have no position. 
Matter of fact, the Bible says that they had a rumor about her in the city. They said she was a sinner woman. She was a sinner woman. Y'all don't know nothing about her. She was a sinner woman. She walked in there and looked. She walked in there. She didn't even argue with them. She kept going. She was tough enough to keep going. She didn't let nobody distract her. Like that. I like her. I like her because she was a woman on a mission. I like her. Because she was a woman with purpose. I like her because she was a woman that refused to let nobody distract her. I like her because she understood who she came to see. Excuse me. I don't care how everybody else acting in church. I came to see Jesus. I'm tired of all the church people. Oh, I don't know what they came for, but I came to see Jesus. She walk in there, they started talking about her, they started murmuring about her, they started running him out about her. She had nothing to lose. That's what's up. She didn't care about who was watching. She didn't care about nothing that, none of that. They looking at her funny. Somebody say, excuse me. We got to make a shirt. We're Frankie. We're gonna make a shirt that say, excuse me. Step aside. I didn't come to see you. They were talking about her. When you go to work, when you go by your family and everybody, and they're trying to steal your, kill your joy and they're trying to talk about you, just look at them and say, excuse me. <laughs> Just say, excuse me, step aside. She came to see Jesus. I like her because she was a woman that knew how to seize the moment. <laughs> she knew how to seize the moment. Let me tell you something. There's never going to be another night like this night. We can gather the same people. We can gather the pastor. We can gather the sound booth, we can gather the same songs, sing the same songs, the choir, have Miss Nadia come back and sing the same, do the same thing. There's never gonna be another time like this, like this moment. Never. So, she walked in there. They was talking about her anyway. I can just see you. one thing that I desire. <laughs> one thing that I desire. Not the title, not the position. One thing. She didn't care what nobody thinks. See, whenever you get, whenever you get ready to come to the presence of God, whenever you get ready to come in, there's always going to be like a, a wall of flesh. It's always going to be like a, a yoke. It's always going to feel like a yoke need to be broken. It's going to always feel like a, like a, like a veil that needs to be torn or something when you come entering into the presence of God. They go talk. It's go always, it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be comfortable. But what I like about her, she kept going. She, she had her mind focused on Jesus. They was talking about it. She didn't even care. They was talking about her. See, when they talk about us, we get mad. We, were, we get mad when they talk about us. Oh, what she said? When they talk about us, oh, she, I know she didn't just pass me up. She, I know she see me standing up right here. But you know what? Next time I'm not going to tell her nothing. You depending on somebody else to make you feel good. Joy don't come from the world. My joy come from, from God. I realized something. Sometimes you don't want to see none of his boys. You come to see him. It comes a time in your life you don't, you don't want to talk to nobody. You want him. But they talked about her. They say she's a sinner woman. But it looked like sin taught her something. 
It looked like sin taught her something. She ain't had time to play games. She didn't have no time to play games. Sin, sin taught her something. It showed her something. She walked up on him. And then I like the way Luke, see Luke, this story talks, it talks about this story in each, in each part of the Bible. It talks about it in Luke. It talks about it in uh, Mark. It talks about it in, in uh, Matthew. And they all describe different things she did. One of them, she, she fell down. Another one, she anointed his head, which represents authority. He, he is sovereign. Another one, she anointed his feet represent he has all things under his feet. Another one, she kissed him. She let down her hair. Not my glory, but your glory. This woman was a worshiper. She did it all. She worshiped him. Not the church. She worshiped him. Not the pastor. She worshiped him. Not the worship leader. She worshiped him. Not the order of the service. She worshiped him. Him, him, him. She didn't come for nobody but him. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm about to wrap it up, y'all. But this is doing so, it's preparing you for what's, the, for what's coming. It's preparing you. It's teaching you. God was teaching us the personal expense of worship. She got in the presence of the Lord. You know how you can tell? Hold on a second. You know how you can tell when somebody been through stuff? There's always going to be somebody that's more desperate than you in church. There's always going to be somebody that's broken, more broken than you. But you know what? You know how you can tell? Your pain produces worship. Pain, when you've been through something, your pain produces worship. Your praise produces worship. Because you've been through something, something different from whatever somebody else went through. Something that it separates you from what they went through. You know what you've been through. She's been through. She fell at the feet of Jesus. Right before Jesus, she fell at his feet. She didn't care about it. She didn't care if she was the only woman in there. She didn't care. She said, I don't care about y'all. I don't care if I'm the only woman. This is what I've been needing, she said. This is what I've been needing. All you church folk, I don't know what they came for, but this is what I need. This is between me and you, Jesus. Excuse me, Peter. Excuse me, Paul. John, I came to see Jesus. I came to see my maker. And when she came into the house, She said, what can I give him? That's good. She said, what can I give him? There's something I got to give him. It's not what she did. It's not her bodily movement that changed the atmosphere. It's what she gave him that changed the atmosphere. What can I give him? I need to give him something. She had an alabaster box. The alabaster box was filled with precious ointment, spignard, very expensive. Some of the theologians say it was shipped from India, made of marble. It was made very expensive so the perfume won't escape the bottle. Some of y'all got them cheap bottles. <laughs> you, you look a year later, I, I thought I used a little bit, half. Why well, I got a little, this bottle wasn't like that. This bottle was expensive. This is all she had. She grabbed the alabaster box. She looked at Jesus. 
she grabbed the alabaster box. She looked at Jesus. She said, this is my life savings. This is what I've been saving up on a rainy day. This is my financial security. This is all I have. But when I, when I worship you, my values change. When I worship you, the things that I was thinking about, I'm not thinking about no more. When I worship you, uh, this is all I have, Jesus. But anything I can do to win you, whatever I got to do just to have you, Jesus. This woman was a real worshiper. See, worship, it creates at the moment. You don't know exact. It's something that creates at the moment, right at the moment. And this woman, she gave him something. What used to be important is not important no more. She broke the box at the feet of Jesus. She broke the box at the feet of Jesus. Not open it. She didn't open it. She broke it. See, someone, that's what we do. We open it. We turn him off and on. You know what you can, you know when you open something up, you can close it. That's what we do. We turn God off and on like a radio. Depending on how our day is. Oh, he been good today. I'm going to turn him up. He been a little bit bad. I, I, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it off. But this woman broke the box where? At the feet of Jesus. At his feet. And you see, when you break it, you can't control how it comes out. When you break it, you can't control how it comes out. See, some of y'all, y'all got control because y'all been open and not broken. Some of y'all got wonderful control. Y'all can control it because y'all never been broken. I've been broken. When I find out that I was a sinner and I was, I wasn't making it to heaven because of all the things I was worried about, fashion and ladies and I was all about the entertainment of men and trying to make them happy and, and trying to please them. And the woman broke the box. It just started leaking from her damaged areas. Started leaking from her wounds. Just leaking all over. Wasn't even thinking about if she gonna cry. She just started crying. Didn't even want it to cry. It just started dripping. Some of us, we hold that in, especially men. I'm a man. You know, real men cry. Cry all the time. Like Pastor said, if y'all see me in my closet. Ugh. Real men cry. Jesus wept. So why you can't cry? Pride. You worried about what everybody else think. I'm a man. My, my, my wife go see me. Come on, man, cry, man, let it out. Because when you cry, you're going to feel better. When you cry, it's going to release something. And Jesus go bottle your tears up and say, son, I love you. She broke the box. It's very important to understand that what, this, what God was teaching us right here was worship. What God was teaching us right here is very important. 2,000 years later, it is still teach today. He said, wheresoever this gospel is preached, throughout the whole world, this woman must be preached. So that means wherever I teach about this Bible, I got to mention it? Yes. No matter what else we, 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 we learn about, this woman must. That's how important. I was like, wait. So if I talk about prayer and this woman must be teach too. Worship must be teach. That's how I look at it. No matter what is going on, worship must be teach. Why? Because it teaches us something. In Luke 7 47 
this is the script, this is the verse where it's only the first time this has ever been said. He says, I tell you, your sins, they are many, have been forgiven. This right here. She, so she have shown much love. Jesus never told nobody that in the Bible, besides, besides the Father. The Father didn't show much love. But no one else, he said, showed me much love. That's important. This woman, what she done, she showed me much love. Much love? She showed me much love because of she worship and she didn't care what nobody else said. I'm about to wrap it up. Jesus want what you've been saving. He wants what you've been saving, what you've been holding back. He is a jealous God. He wants your alabaster box tonight. He wants what's most important to you tonight. Whatever it is, we got tired boxes in the back, whatever you want to give. This is a house of worship. Whatever it is, you have saved it, but you haven't broken him. If you have broken it, you could have saved him. He is jealous of what you've been saving. And he won't let you get the real blessing tonight until you break the box. So tonight is a night for us to break whatever it is that's been holding us back. If you say you never came for nobody else, if you say Tonight is the night, whatever it is. Break the box. I could go on, but about the aroma and the smell afterward. But I think this is a good point right here. We're about to continue with more intimacy songs, and there's a moment where we can. Hallelujah. Glory to God.